Well, what's up again there, guys? Brian here, the Three Topics Scammer, here to give you another episode of my weekly Q&A to how the people's questions were answered, a series of questions that have been sent to me over the past week. Uh, this episode is uh, pretty standard. I think this time we only had about like, maybe five, yeah, like five questions. There were a number of questions that you know were sent to me also in the comment section that I was able to answer in the comment section of the last video, so I hope you guys have had your notifications bell set. But I jump uh, before I jump into my gut, your questions, like always, if you happen to enjoy this video or would like to see more content, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. Or you can just press one of the links in the description if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media outlets because that is, you know, I think I'm pretty awesome. But jump right into the first question. Coming from Brady Burke, he wants to know what movies, video game, or in TV show do I think has the best fight choreography? I, I don't know. Uh, there's too many to count, but I don't know. I guess. It, I'm sorry. I'm sh I'm not sure if you guys know this, but I live next to an airport. Um. I don't, I don't know. There's just too many. There's too many to pick. I mean, I. I don't know. I, I, I would prefer choreograph that's usually just between like two people, and there's good back and forth action. And then, I, but I mean that's that's the best way I could describe it. I mean, there's some people that you know like it when one guy's taking on multiple different people, or maybe it's two on one, or it's three on one, or it's two on two. And I I like to keep it simple. Just one on one fights are usually the fights I like the most. Next question comes from Will Williams, and you want to know: Are there any fictional characters that said something that stuck with you? If so, who? Are they and what did they say? Uh, yeah, uh, one that really comes to mind. Uh, Evie from uh, V for Vendetta, played by Natalie Portman. Uh, her character said that her, her father said that artists use lies to tell the truth. For some reason, that quote has really stuck with me. Uh, another thing that another character had said came from the boss from Metal Gear Solid 3 when uh, after Operation Sneak Eater begins and Big Boss encounters her for the first time she's said one, one of her big things is talking about loyalty and she asks uh, you know Jack at that point you know where is his loyalty is his loyalty with his country or is his loyalty with her and he she makes all these quotes saying you know it's either your mission or your beliefs your commanding officer or your personal feelings is like you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to make a choice that's kind of the whole point of being a soldier something like that really stuck to me um well, those are just a, a couple of examples there's, there's there's a couple other ones but you know that would make the video way too long next question comes from i believe the only new person who i don't think i've ever answered a question uh, in the in this series before but your name is artist gant so welcome and your question was a bit odd to me, because you asked, did I think at some point that Metal Gear Solid 4 had needless fan service? I don't really know what you mean by needless fan service. When I look back at that game, there isn't anything in there that I thought was just fan service. Everything had a purpose. I mean, think about it. I mean, the first art, I mean, the first act, you had uh, Old Snake kind of go into a war zone and find what the hell is, Li is Liquid Ocelot up to. And then you find out that he's doing something that allows someone to take control of the nano uh, nano machines in someone's body. And then you go to the second arc and he's trying to find Naomi Hunter and find out what's wrong with his body. And then in the third arc, he runs into Big Mama and finds out exactly what Liquid Ocelot is trying to do and why he's trying to recover the corpse of Big Boss who ended up turning to be Solace. And then in the fourth arc, you go back to Shadow Moses. Now, I think you might be thinking that going back to Shadow Moses was fan service, but there was a practical purpose for that. They needed to go back to Shadow Moses in order to stop or try to prevent Ocelot, or Liquid Ocelot, I should say, from recovering the rail gun from the Metal Gear Rex that was still left there. And the fact that you got to pilot the Metal Gear Rex was like the high, it was like one of my favorite moments of all time because for a series called Metal Gear, this is the first and only time you ever get to pilot a Metal Gear. It's 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 an epic moment. And then in the last and then in the last arc, uh, you're you're going to Outer Haven and you're dealing with the final confrontation and then at the end you know, you have that final meeting between Salt Snake and Big Boss, and Big Boss dies, and they're together, and it's a, it's a beautiful moment. I can't think of anything in that game that was just thrown in there for fan service. I think everything in there had a practical and logistical purpose for 
be, make structuring the story that they had. So, no, I don't think Metal Gear Solid 4 had any needless fan service. I thought it was very well constructed. Now, this question is very, very extensive, and so I gotta apologize, but this comes from Red Guilty, and you had a very long question, so stick with me, fellas. Your question was, do I think that Scorpion should get his own something, uh, I think you're missing a word, someday, since he's the face of Mortal Kombat and has always been very interesting as a character, more than Liu Kang, Liu Kang is a generic protagonist, well that's uh, an opinion, and Scorpion has a much richer backstory and he should become the new protagonist of the franchise, just like Virgil from Devil May Cry, he is an anti-hero. Here's the problem with Scorpion. Scorpion doesn't really have much depth. I'm sorry, I mean he's my favorite character, but his backstory has been told a hundred times, and once you get to the end of the story, there's not, like, Really, what more can you do for a character? I mean, this is his entire backstory. His family gets killed. He gets resurrected as a hell spawn. Kills the guy he thought killed his family. Finds out that wasn't the guy that killed his family. Then kills the guy that actually killed his family. Then makes peace with his clan's rival clan. And that's it. I, I mean, Scorpion's entire arc is built upon revenge. But... Once he's gotten his revenge, there's not much you can do with his character. I mean, I'm sorry to say that, it, I mean, if they hadn't added that whole Chronica and time-altering element in Mortal Kombat 11, there's really not anything you could do with Scorpion past Mortal Kombat 10. I'm sorry to say it, but that, that, that is the truth. So, no, I'm sorry. Do I think Scorpion should get his own movie? Probably not, because it wouldn't be anything that we haven't already seen. I mean, even in the latest animated movie, which they tried to make it about Scorpion, but it's, I mean, it's called Scorpion's Revenge, but they they speak that up relatively quickly. I mean, so no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think you can really, now I don't mind him having a prominent role, but do I think that Scorpion should be the main character of a Mortal Kombat movie? No, I do not. And I'm fairly certain that when the remake or reboot of the next Mortal Kombat movie is released, he's not going to be the main character. I think the main character is Liu Kang. That is, I'm sorry, he may not be the face of the franchise, but he is the main character of the series, and that's just how it's always going to be, and I think that's how it should be. I think every franchise needs a focal main character, despite the, even if he's surrounded by characters who have much more interesting stories and backstories and arts than he does, but I'm sorry. I, I do not think that Scorpion should get his own movie. Just, I'm sorry. Just, there's just not enough to him. And the last question of the episode comes from CHS Celebrity. And you want to know, you have a question about Inception. You watched it, and at the end, spoiler alert, when he gets home to his kids, the top is spinning. So that, so that doesn't mean that the whole movie was a dream. The movie blew me away as well. I'm glad it did, because that is my favorite movie of all time. Um, here's the thing about the ending, uh, CHS. It's up to your interpretation. You can believe that, heck, maybe it was all a dream. Now, now you never see the... You never see the, the top fall. The movie cuts before that happens. Now, if you look online, there is an official answer. I think Nolan does answer officially whether or not the whole thing was a dream. But it's up for the audience to decide. You never know if the top is going to keep spinning or not. That's the whole point of the ending. You don't know if everything was a dream or if he finally woke up. That's the whole point. So, I, 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 th I think he got home. I mean, if you just if if the if the if the film had gone another twenty seconds, I think the top would have fell. That's what I believe. But heck, I never see that happen. Again, it's up to your own interpretation. So some people think that the whole movie was a dream and the top never fell. I think that the top would have eventually fell, and he did get home. I think that's just what I think. But again, as I said many times, it's up for you to decide how you think the movie ends. And I like those kind of endings. Um, that's one of the few endings that ha movies that has an ending like that, and that's why it really sticks out to me. And with that, those are the questions that have been sent to me that I made it into this video. If you guys have any more questions you'd like me to answer in next week's episode, be sure to type them in the comments down below, and make sure you get them into me roughly before Wednesday at noon before I start filming the next episode. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I will see you next week.